Okay, welcome to my uh, tutorial training on using Photoshop uh, Creative Cloud with uh, Adobe, by Adobe to prepare your image for the web or for your blog. And we're going to uh, make this look better. We're going to optimize it. We're going to improve the quality, clarity, um, color. We're going to resize it. We're going to watermark it. And then we're going to export it for the web. So I'm going to try not to talk too fast. I'm going to try to keep this to 15 minutes. I'm going to start with, this is the uh, image right off my camera. And just to show you how bad you can mess something up. I did this quickly last week. I've never gotten a chance to finish this article that I was doing. And I edited the hell out of this. I, I did it quickly and I ruined it. I overexposed it and did every worst thing you're not supposed to do. So in my disgust, I gave it up and thought I'd do it again. So I'm going to show you uh, the right way to do it because um, clearly I know the wrong way to do it as well. Um, so you don't want it to look like that. So I'm going to start by letting you know I never work on the original. It was a mistake that I made years ago and I have lost many a really nice picture of my kids that I missed because I over edited kind of like that. Got excited, you know, you get too many controls and you hurt yourself. So I'm going to show you how to safely use controls and the first thing you're going to do is right click on it and duplicate it. And the second thing you're going to do is be smart about what you name it. This article is for an article that I'm doing for my blog and the uh, for SEO my keywords are going to be chocolate house. And so I'm doing chocolate underscore house actually capitalization doesn't matter. And I'm going to put 12 because I have a number of images different um, uh, views of the chocolate house. And um, so this is number 12 and I'm going to hit OK. And nothing has been saved at this point. Uh, it's simply open in Photoshop. It is not saved. I'm going to close this one so that I don't hurt myself. And I'm looking at it at 66% um, and, and it's really, really large on my screen because it is um, very, very large. It's, it's like 4,000 pixels across. So I am going to work with it large while I do the image editing. I, um, I resize it after I do this because I'm able to view this in the best quality that I can while I am looking at the little details of the house. I want more detail and definition in the house. And that's where I got carried away with the other one. I want all the royal icing detail um, to show as well. So we're going to start with a setting called HDR toning. It only works on images that are single layer. What do I mean? So I open this up and there's one layer. It's a background layer. It's this. If you have done some in editing and you've added some text and you've done all the da da da, if you go to do HDR toning, it's going to want to flatten your image. It will warn you, you're going to want to say no. So this is a sub kind of thing you're going to want to do first. And then depending upon the type of image or um, photo you're doing, like pictures of people, you're not going to want to use HDR toning. Now there is a way that you can do HDR toning on only certain parts of an image and leave people's faces, for example, alone. But um, that is a video for another time. So I'm going to start by doing the uh, HDR toning. Again, let's just kind of look at our palette here. We have the layers, character, character and paragraph. Layers is the only um, palette we're going to be using. And so if you don't see it on yours, go to Window and click on Layers to open that up. And then I'm going to pull this over here so you can see when I hover over or I click on Image and I go to Adjustments, uh, HDR toning is its own Thing. And once I click it, you're going to see it make changes to the image based on the defaults. And you can make your own defaults. But this is Photoshop's def defaults, and I'm actually pretty okay with it. So you could see it did brighten it up. It did kind of zero in on some details. But where it kind of falls short every time is with saturation. So let's take that more down to zero here. And when I say zero, zero is like the midpoint. It's not a plus or a minus. Okay, so I, I can take it further down and it will actually desaturate the entire picture, which we don't want. We just don't want 
uh, the crazy red here. And so the other thing we can do is we can use vibrance to remove some of the crazy color, but you, you know, don't want to kind of take too much out. So I'll add a little bit of the gold in. That's what the saturation is doing. And the vibrance takes some of the crazy out of the red. So highlight I never mess with. Highlight makes whites very, very blinding white. And for me, I no matter what my picture is, I'm almost never using that. Shadow, however, and you're going to look at the wood grain in my hutch here and also uh, the chocolate. When I do shadow, it definitely darkens up. It, it definitely makes the darks darker to give you more definition in the image. So depending upon it, it's one of the few that I will take all the way to the bottom. I think, let's see, is this overdone? Nope, that actually looks good. Okay, detail is a place where you can hurt yourself. I love detail, but you can take this too far and really make it look crazy. So this looks good. So the plus 69, but let's look what 228 looks like. That's a crazy amount of detail. And so let's, what did I have it at 69? Okay, here's 52, and 52 is good. 52, yeah, 69, it's even better. So the only thing about this, and I don't know if you notice it, it makes very, very hard edges. So <clears throat> exposure and gamma, don't touch. Trust me on it, you'll hurt yourself. Strength too, kind of makes it look weird. So we're going to take the radius of the pixels, or the edge glow, and we're gonna pick that up a little, and it will take some of the hardness out of the detail. Okay, it'll, it'll make, the picture look a little better again um, and undo some of the uh, hardness that detail creates. Does that make sense? So I'm going to hit OK, but know that if you hit OK, that um, this will be something that you're not going to be able to <clears throat> ever go back to this point again. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to commit this. So if I decide, oh, you know what, the, the red still is a little too red down here, I want to change it. If you do HDR toning again, it starts with this is a starting point and you're going to end up over overdoing this image. You don't really want to do that. So what you could do is go to edit and then undo. You could step backward, which always works, or undo HDR toning and you could say and then start again. You could redo HDR toning and you could see that's the difference in it. Much brighter, much clearer, good definition on it. So now we're ready to make this smaller. So we're going to go to image and we're going to go to size and 72 is the resolution. If it's 92 or 300, for purposes of the web, we want to make it 72. That is the largest size that you can make it without losing any uh, quality of the image. Um, so width, we're going to put 900 because that is still actually quite large. But for me, I like a large photo. I like um, the photos kind of speak for themselves on my blog. You can see some of the blogs that look really nice are, are these big images that are easy to see. If I wanted this to be an image that would pop out and have a light box, I might make it 1200. But as you can see, um, just what I did, taking it down to 900, it's now 1.3 megapixels down from 26 megapixels. So, and we're going to get it even smaller than that by exporting it optimized. So let's click OK. And now it looks like it got really small, but it didn't. We're still looking at 66%. Let's take it up to 100%, or actually about 118. So let's take it still even closer. I want to be able to see what I'm doing. So um, it might actually be too hard. I might have actually made this too much detail, but oh well. Um, with the background layer selected here, I'm going to add a new layer because I'm going to put the watermark on a layer so I can drag it around if I want. And I'm going to show you a little trick about the watermark is I've created my own watermarks and I've got a bunch of them. So here's a, a brush here and you can see that it has a white background, which is not correct, but this is a layered PSD file. Um, I'm going to work with this and I'm not going to, I can remove the background, knock the background out and export this as a ping and drop it in uh, as a layer. Or what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to commit this to a brush. And with a brush, you need it to look exactly like you want it to look. So the white is going to be knocked out by Photoshop, but I want this to be my brush. So I'm going to go up to edit and I'm going to do define brush preset. And this will save it as a brush. 
What does that even mean? I am going to click on my brush, okay? And this image was 580 pixels, you could see up here. And you could see that it my brush became that which I just put in. So when you do that with a brush, black and white and shades of gray are the best. If you put color in it, it will remove the color. So I am going to, because I have it on its own layer, I can put it here and that's crazy, ridiculously big. And I can drag it around to see where it is I want it to be. Um, and you can just undo it, um, step backward to take it out of there. And I am going to go back to my brush here and I take it from 580 to more like um, uh, somewhere in the 250s. And, and this is actually really not easy, 275, uh, maybe 300. Okay, I went backward, ah, 291. Okay, we're good. So the color that it's going to be is dependent on um, this over here. So I can pull out a color that's in here if I wanted. I can make it stark white. I can make it dark. I'm going to click on it. Yes, it does look a little fuzzy. It's because we're looking at it at 190%. So I'm going to move this up a little because I want them to see that it is copyrighted me. And if you want your website information in there, you can. Um, let's see. I think that's fine for me. And so now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this forward so that you can see this. When I hit file, I'm going to do export. And with the latest version of Adobe Creative Suite, and here we go, that I have, uh, let me go back to that because I think it fell off the side. Export, it has save for web legacy. So if you have an older version of Photoshop, it says save for web. The reason why this is legacy is now they've made exporting way more complicated than I want it to be. What I liked about it at legacy is that I can choose how I want this exported. Um, it's, you could choose medium or low or high, or you could actually just edit it by doing the quality. So it remembers that 47 is what I've had the other images at, but normally I'm down at around 30, and you can see that would make this 83 uh, kilobytes, whereas I want, to, I want this more in the 40s because I want to save those pixels because the smaller that you make it the less clear that that image is and then we've just done all that for nothing so i don't want it to really be much over 100 so that's 44 is 101 kb so that's good enough for me so i'm going to hit save it will save it when you export it to the last one that you've done i'm going to overwrite that awful photo and we're good to go now you're left here with a layered image you didn't have to layer it i put the this on a layer because i wanted to move it i don't normally save this so i'm going to hit out now if you did not have this layer and say you use the brush and you just clicked on where you wanted it and you got it right and you hit x it's going to ask you if you want to save it now this is saving it with layers as a psd file and that's fine but if you go to save it and it saves as a JPEG because it's one image, one uh, layer, you have a chance that you're going to overwrite. So you're going to want to change the name or add, append the name. So if you want to hit yes, it's a PSD, it's not a problem, it's the same name. But if you want to save it as a JPEG again, you do need to, um, you do need to, I don't, I don't want to save this, you do need to change the name. Otherwise, you've exported a JPEG and you overwrite this J, that JPEG and then you have lost all of the edits that you've done to it, you know, exporting it, I should say. So that's it. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Good luck and happy blogging.